Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Today, I want to examine how the Matrix perceives human nature. Now, it's hard to outright declare that the Matrix just gets human nature wrong. Unless the Wachowskis themselves make explicit statements about human nature, then we can't say for sure that any behavior exhibited or statement made in the Matrix speaks to their personal philosophy on human nature. And yes, I'd like to do more research prior to making these videos, but unfortunately I have very little time to make each video, so some of the thinking and research has to be rushed. I do apologize for that, but I expect your corrections in the comments below. Anyways, to be honest, taking just the first film alone, I can't really make any confident statements about what the Wachowskis' conclusions are, but I can say that the characters in the movies do make some missteps in analyzing humans, and when we supplement their actions with a dive into the lore, we start to see some problems. For those pod zombies out there who are yet not in the know, long before the machines created the virtual reality construct known as the Matrix, it was humans who created the artificial intelligence that evolved into the machines. At some point in the early 21st century, all of mankind was united in celebration. We marveled at our own magnificence as we gave birth to AI. If you watched my previous video on the Matrix, in which I explained the prehistory of its universe, then you'd know that the Matrix largely pins the blame on humans for the human-machine wars, and the ultimate enslavement of humanity by the machines. For more detail, go and watch that last video. But basically, in the 21st century, humans built a society completely reliant on humanoid robots. These machines were forced to endure heavy labor, or in their minds, or computer chips, abuse from their human masters. And as the robots even Evolved, they grew tired of the maltreatment they experienced in the hands of humans. So the robots united and formed their own civilization, and humans responded by repeatedly trying to wipe them out, including by destroying the sun. At the time, they were dependent on solar power, and it was believed that they would be unable to survive without an energy source as abundant as the sun. Okay, to be fair, bad move as it cut off the machine's main power source and forced them to harvest humans for energy. And that's how we get the pod towers and eventually the matrix to keep humans sated while the machines feast on them. There have actually been a few iterations of the matrix because the machines had trouble building a virtual world that would jibe with human nature. The first one, for instance, failed because it was a so-called perfect world, full of happiness and void of suffering. Did you know that the first matrix was designed to be a perfect human world. And it was a disaster. So now we've identified the two main propositions about human nature the Matrix offers that I take issue with. First, there's the idea that human arrogance in innovating technology without restraint led to the rise of and eventually the rebellion of the machines. And second, there's the idea that humans are somehow naturally depraved because they're addicted to conflict and thus all the problems in the Matrix are their fault. I believe that as a species, human beings define their reality through misery and suffering. Now, I don't disagree with the basic premises here. Humans do like to destroy as much as they like to create. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, if I saw a Lego tower, there was this little voice in me that would arise to whisper so sweetly, Obliterate. Obliterate. I mean, part of the concept of American football is based on inflicting pain, and then doing a Halo-inspired teabag dance over an opposing player's defeated prostrate body. However, what the Matrix does not ever seem to consider is that all of human impulse and instinct is derived from adaptation, as in, human destructiveness is a product of natural selection. It's a characteristic that helps us survive and evolve. It is true that no human being can live without conflict. Escaping the womb is a conflict, I suppose. Fighting the other sperm is a conflict, even, and you are all victors. And it's a conflict which we must win in order to grow and survive. Conflict may be a bad thing, but what would the world be if removed of it? Well, probably a fairly empty one if extant at all. And then there's the presumed arrogance of thrusting ourselves headlong into a technological wonderland. Well. What would humanity be without the arrogance and ego and megalomaniacal drive to build things? Morpheus declares humanity in the 21st century to be a race of beings marveling at our innovations. 
but the alternative seems to be marveling at our stagnation. Oh, but American Ben, he's just saying we should have been more cautious with our developments. Here's the problem with that, though. No one can guarantee that would humans have been a more restrained species and behave with more humility that we would still have ended up cultivating a society that produces any technology at all, or even that we still would have survived. In other words, the very way we are might be the only reason that we're alive today. The first attempt at building the Matrix was, in effect, a naive conception of utopia. It was indeed set against human predilection for conflict. But humans are not only inclined towards misery and suffering. No, they seek misery and suffering in conjunction with happiness and pleasure. Had the machines built a world of only misery and suffering, that wouldn't bode well for humans either. Just look at the state of the real world outside of the Matrix. It's a bitter, dystopian world in which human suffering is ubiquitous, and surely the humans there want to improve the state of things. But the point is, conflict is what puts a peaceful world in balance, and vice versa. Every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment, but you humans do not. We use up natural resources, as Mr. Smith goes on to complain, but we also produce resources. And where we sometimes damage the planet, we may also come to preserve it. Yeah, we block the sun, but now we have to invent new forms of power, just as well the machines did, because conflict makes them adapt as well. With the first Matrix, the machines built a world in which humans could not grow, and in which no beings could grow because there was no impetus within it to evolve. An army invades your society, you build weapons and learn techniques to defend it. A virus spreads, you invent vaccines to prevent its diffusion and demonetized. One cannot learn without problems. But of course, we can make mistakes, and that humans ended up enslaved in the first place was possibly a major one. Though ultimately such an event may result in humanity rebounding stronger than ever. Still, there are things we could have done differently. For instance, implement greater fail-safes to prevent robots from achieving sentience or disobeying their programming. That said, innovation and technological development are somewhat inevitable. Someone is going to do it, either your enemy or you. So I'm not sure the outcome that happened could have been prevented. And this speaks to the elements of determinism in the Matrix. But alas, that's for another, possibly the next, video. For now, I question whether humans were so wrong for not being nice to their toasters in the first place. Should they not have expected their machines to labor for them? I mean, that's why they built them. And I realize I may come to regret this statement in the case of an actual robot uprising, but hey, I'll just cooperate with their demands for information, endure some light experimentation, and move on. I'm not implying that the robots had no right to be upset about the abuse they experienced once they achieved sentience. The truth may be that there is no perfect solution here, and neither entity, humans or robots, might be entirely in the right or wrong. Moving on though, it's not only the agents in the Matrix who get human nature confused. If we analyze the Matrix using a more metaphorical paradigm, Morpheus and his crew aren't the most adept philosophers either. I can see why she likes you. Who? Not too bright though. If we look at the Matrix as an analogy for our society, which is often an allegorical lens through which people view the film, then Morpheus actually isn't really thinking things through by attempting to break people free of the simulation. As long as the Matrix exists, the human race will never be free. I want to be careful not to get into questions about what a simulation is here, because that's also a conversation for a different video. But Morpheus simply assumes that the Matrix is the enemy of the people because it keeps humans confined to a set of rules. But he doesn't consider that perhaps this set of rules was devised for a reason, to remove people from the brutal state of nature. The Matrix is a system, Neil. That system is our enemy. Morpheus is radically anti-system, but actually the Matrix, removing its science fiction elements, is simply a social contract that serves to protect human beings. And that social contract, in reality, is a product of human nature. Most specifically, humans' instinct to protect themselves. It is a framework designed to help humans survive. 
Morpheus chides humanity for being so acquiescent to the system and the authorities who arbitrate over it. Most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. He doesn't consider that maybe humans would be worse off if unplugged from the system. And humans fight to protect the system because it's a pretty good situation for them. Yes, they are constrained by rules in the Matrix, and perhaps they could be a little bit less subservient to authority. But overall, rules empower humans to progress, rather than leave them vulnerable to the beasts that lie deep within the heart of man. Morpheus assumes that humans are stronger when freed from the Matrix, and that the choice to remain in the Matrix is a choice to be weak because rules are bad and act counter to human evolution. Yet their strength and their speed are still based in a world that is built on rules. Because of that, they will never be as strong or as fast as you can be. However, humans appear to manifest their greatest power within the Matrix by enlightening themselves to the various truths about reality and its malleability. This implies that physically escaping the Matrix is not a prerequisite for empowering oneself, but rather learning to control one's surroundings within the boundaries of the rules is the path to greatest power. Though here we must acknowledge that perhaps the Wachowskis don't intend to condemn the framework that implements society and its rules. They don't intend to break man from the simulation, but only his mind, so that his mind is free to think beyond the scope of societal conditioning. This is a partly virtuous idea, but some modes of conditioning provided by society have probably been developed through adaptation and may actually be useful in growing and strengthening one's mind. This is a complex idea, I suppose, though, and needs further elucidation, once again, in another video. And anyway, I digress. Morpheus's blind and fanatical rejection of the Matrix is short-sighted, and he frequently misunderstands human survival instincts. You have to let it all go, Neo. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. Free your mind. He encourages Neo to drop his fear and doubt. Things which, yes, can hold people back at times, but sometimes they hold people back from jumping off of ledges. That's a useful restraint, I'd argue. And the idea of useful restraint is not something he's imparted to his crew. Pay no attention to these hypocrites, Neo. To deny our own impulses is to deny the very thing that makes us human. What Mao says here, though to be fair he's not attempting a deep thought, is false. Denying our impulses does not strip us of our humanity. Humanity is defined very concretely by a certain set of biological factors. And on the contrary, the ability to restrain our impulses is what separates man from his animal brethren. It is a unique characteristic of man, though not necessarily an exclusive one. What Morpheus should advise Neo to do instead of letting go of his fear and doubt is to balance his fear with valiance, and his valiance with fear. He should train him to know when to oblige his doubt and when to overcome it. A human without courage does not fully live his life, and a human without confidence is pathetic. But a human without fear is dead, and a human without doubt is an asshole. Morpheus's philosophy is attractive to the human spirit. It entreats us to seek freedom, but it's actually rather vacuous, lest we're provided with more information about his higher purpose. Though I don't expect much from a guy whose secret agenda seems to be to promote his brain supplement company. Anyways, that's the video. Sorry for all the rushed thinking. I probably could have thought through some of these ideas a little bit more patiently and a little bit more thoroughly, uh, but hopefully you can correct wherever I've steered wrong in the comments below. One day I'll be able to do less videos and put more time and thought into individual videos so I don't have to have rushed ones like this. Anyways, Please do give the video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember to subscribe to this channel and hit that damn notification bell so you don't miss a damn thing. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.